all right ladies and gentlemen of the youtube citizens y'all know who this is this is your boy that's the true and fun oh back with another throwback tunes on another thursday we are going way back with this one we are reviewing the chronic by dr dre yes i cannot believe i did not review this album but yeah here it is i'm now finally reviewing the chronic by dr dre so this joint came out december 15 1992 and the entire albums were recorded in june of the same year 1992 so this joint was under death row studios and was also under interscope and priority records as well and the producers involved with dr dre obviously saying he produced every single beat off this album and silk knight who was the executive producer so there you go with that let's take a look at the lyrics not much in terms of production in regards to like a background info but the lyrics are a different story so the album's lyrics caused some controversies as the subject matter includes sexism and violent representations it was noted that the albums was a and i quote frightening amalgam uh a m a l g a m in case you wonder what i just said of inner city street gangs that includes sexual politics and violent revenge scenarios end quote most of the NWA members were addressed on the album. Eazy E and Ice Q were this on the second single, Fuck With Dre Day. While MC Ren, however, was shouted out on the album's intro. Dr. Dre's dissing of former bandmate Eazy E resulted in Vince's lyrics, which were mainly aimed at offending his enemy with homosexual implications, although it was noted to have a, and I quote here, a spirited cleverness in the praising and rhymes. In other words, the song is offensive, but it's creatively offensive, end quote. Now, here's a little bit of info that some of you should know, but check this out. Snoop Doggy Dog, as he was known back then, who had a significant role on the album, was praised for his lyrics and flow, and it was mentioned that, and I quote here, coupled with his inventive rhyme, Snoop's distinctive style made him a superstar before he even released a record of his own, end quote and that his involvement was an important was as important to the album's success as his production so there you go with that so snoop dogg was basically all over the place with this album so yeah and he used the album as a launching pad for his own solo career so yeah there you go with that now let's take a look at the before we look at the trust let's take a look at you know how it did the charts and obviously the certifications so it was 91st in the Australian album charts, 32nd in the German album charts, 48th in the Irish album charts, 35th in the Swedish album charts, 43rd in the UK album charts, 11th in the UK R&B album charts, 3rd in the US Billboard 200, and number 1 in the US Top R&B Slash Hip Hop Albums charts. And it was gold out in the UK, and it was triple platinum in the United States. So with that out the way, let's take a look at these tracks. So here's the deal. We got a grand total of 16 tracks. How Ever. out of those 16 tracks you obviously have the intro you have the outro and you have outside of those two you have one two technically three skits and so that's five skits for the most part so 11 of these tracks are actual songs so i can only give you guys a top three not a top five now there are like three different versions of this album like one of them is like a D two of them are like dvd versions and then you got the remastered edition bonus material so we only go focus on the original album, nothing else that was added later on or anything like that. So the first track is called The Chronic, which is the intro. And guess who it features? Snoop Dogg. Yeah, so there you go with that. The second track is called Fuck With Dre Day, one of the three singles that was uh, off this album. Actually, let me read the whole title. Fuck With Dre Day and Everybody's Celebrating, without the G at the end, featuring Jarrell, RBX, and Snoop Dogg. Oh, and expect to see the likes of Jewel and RBX all throughout this album as well. Speaking of which, the third track, Let Me Ride, which is the second single off the album, is features Jewel, Ruben Cruz, and Snoop Dogg. The fourth track is called The Day the Niggas, with a Z at the end, took oh, a Z at the end, rather, took over, featuring Daz Dillinger, RBX, and you guessed it, Snoop Dogg. Now, the fifth track off this album called Nothing But a G Thing, which is arguably one of dr dre's if not dr dre's most recognizable and successful single ever track ever and nothing but a g thing obviously n-u-t-h-i-n no g at the end but a g thing t-h-a-n-g we all should know how this is spelled and guess who it features yeah we all should know this it's snoop dog obviously 
Track number six is called D's, D E E E Z, Nuts, N U U U T S, featuring Daz Dillinger, Nate Dogg, recipe by the way, Warren G, and Snoop Dogg. There you go. Track number seven is called Lil Ghetto Boy, featuring Daz Dillinger, and yep, Snoop Dogg. Oh, here's a shocker. Track number eight, a nigga with a W I T T A, a nigga with a gun, features nobody. There you go. Track number nine is called Rat Tat Tat Tat, featuring RBX and Snoop Dogg. Track number 10 is one of those skits. The $20 sack pyramid featuring Big Titty Nikki, Samoa, Snoop Dogg, and the DOC. Track number 11 called Lyrical Game Bang featuring Corrupt, The Lady of Rage, and RBX. Shocking on Snoop Dogg. Track number 12, High Power featuring RBX. And I believe, yeah, that's one of those uh, skits that that our album doesn't label as a skit, but if you were to listen to it, it, it feels like a skit. It sounds like a skit. And no Snoop Dogg. Track number 13 is called The Doctor's Office, featuring, uh, featuring rather Jurel and the Lady of Rage, followed by Stranded on Death Row. And actually, I believe The Doctor's Office was a skit. Yeah, that is a skit as well. Like I was saying, track number 14 is called Stranded on Death Row, featuring Bush Rick Bill, Corrupt, The Lady of Rage, RBX, and Snoop Dogg. Track number 15 is The Roach, the chronic outro in parentheses. And that one, even though it's an outro and more of a skit, features Daz Dillinger, Image, hope I said that uh, correctly, E L M A G E, Jurel, The Lady of Rage, RBX, and Ruben Cruz. And then, of course, we got track number 16, which is called Bitches Ain't Shit, featuring The Dog Pound, T H A, not T H E, Jurel, and Snoop Dogg. So, yeah, there you go with that. All right, so let's take a look at the three singles and then we go look at that last track as well. So the first single is Nothing But A G Thing. So this joint came out November 19, 1992. So is this the first single? Uh, yes, it is. This is the first single. Okay, just to be sure. Yeah, that is the first single. So let's take a look at this one. Let's look at the background here. The vocals are shared by Dre and Snoop Dogg who drop in trademark references to Long Beach and Compton, California. The song contains samples from Leon Hayward's I Want A, W-A-N-T, a possibly A. I Want to Do Something Freaky To You. Ow, you know that song. Uh, also, it contains samples from B-Side Wins Again by Public Enemy and Uphill, Peace of Mind in parentheses, by Kid Dynamite. On the inside cover of the chronic, under credits, Hayward's name is incorrectly given as L. Hayward, which is interesting. Let's see. Dre and Snoop return for a sequel to the song titled The Next Episode. And Snoop Dogg's first single from The Game Is To Be Sold, Not To Be Told, was a sequel to the song titled Still A, a G Thing. Dre and Snoop retooled nothing but a G Thing into the title of theme of their 2001 comedy film The Rock. Very interesting. And of course, there was a music video for this as well. And this joint is all over pop culture without question. And let's look at the accolades real quick. So this song is listed in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame's 500 songs that shape rock and roll, which is interesting. It is Dre's only song on Rolling Stone's list of the 500 greatest songs of all time, which is interesting. Ranked n number 419, not counting two other songs that feature Dre as producers and on vocals, NWA's Fuck the Police and Tupac's California Love. Q Magazine listed as the 24th greatest hip hop song of all time. And in September 2010, Pitchfork Media included at number three on their top 200 tracks of the 90s. All right, let's look at the charts. And it's not a lot, thank goodness. So it was 63rd out in Australia, 39th out in New Zealand, 31st on the UK singles charts, and number two in the US Billboard Hot 100. And it was number one on the US Hot RB slash hip hop songs charts, and number one on the US Hot R uh, rap songs charts. And that was in 92, starting in 92. But by the end of 93, it was 11th in the U.S. Billboard Hot 100. And by the end of the 90s, the decade itself, it was 95th on the U.S. Billboard Hot 100. This joint came out in the early 90s, and it was still on that chart throughout the decade. That's crazy. And the single was platinum, selling around or slightly over uh, 1,300,000 copies. All right, let's look at the next single, which is called Fuck With Dre Day. So this joint came out May 20th, 1993. Alright, so and again, this is the second single off of this album. And actually, again, the title is called Fuck Your Dre Day, and in parentheses, and everybody celebrating without the G. So, though not quite matching the popularity of Dre's earlier hit, Nothing But a G Thing, 
the single did still do well commercially, managing to reach number. Okay, we ain't gonna talk about the charts until later. The song contains, uh, actually not contain, but feature a slowed down interpolation of Funkadelic's parentheses, not just in parentheses, knee deep, not just knee deep, basically, as its bass line and features Jarrell on vocals and RBX on the chorus. The song also contains a sample and an interpolation from George Clinton's Atomic Dog. An accompanying music video was directed by Dre himself. The song was a diss track towards rappers Easy E, who was obviously a part of the NWA, Tim Dog, and East Coast rapper who slightly, who slightly, excuse me, the whole West Coast rap scene, and released an inc incendiary diss towards NWA title for Compton and Luther Luke Campbell from Two Live Crew, whose track Faking Like Gangsters from his debut solo album, I Got Shit On My Mind featuring JT Money from the group Poison Clan, was taken personally for making references to some of the popular rappers in the gangster category, really uh, specifically referring to NWA. There were also some lyrics alluding to former NWA rapper Ice Q, who departed, you know, obviously from the group, 1989 and ridiculed Dre on the track No Vaseline off of his 1991 album Death Sutter uh, Death ah, I can't pronounce it today we go skip it you know the album I'm trying to say so let's take a look at some lyrics then we go creep to South Central on a street knowledge mission as I step in the tempo spot him got him as I pull out my strap got my crone to the side of his right sock hat you trying to check my home check my homie rather. You best check yourself. Cause when you diss Dre, you diss yourself. Has references to Q's production operating street knowledge productions, now Lynch Mob Records. The lyrics step in the tempo referring to Ice Q's affiliation with the national the Nation of Islam and hit his single Check Yourself from third album The Predator. However, by the album's release, Ice Q was on friendlier terms with Dr. Dre even having a cameo appearance in Let Me Ride. So unlike Easy e and Luke, he was not parody in the music video. So yeah, there was a music video about uh, for this single as well. Now let's take a look at the charts. And this was 49th out in New Zealand, 59th in the UK single charts, and 8th in the US Billboard Hot 100, 29th in the US Dance Club songs, interesting, 6th in the US Hot RB slash Hip Hop songs charts, 13th in the US Hot Rap songs, Six in the U.S. Whitman charts and number one in the U.S. Hot Dance Music slash Maxi Single Sales chart. Again, interesting. And by the end of the year, 1993, it was 53rd in the U.S. Billboard Hot 100. And this single was certified gold. All right, let's look at the third and final single off this album, which is called Let Me Ride. So this joint came out September 13, 1993. All right, let's see. And... The song, or the chorus rather, involves both a sample and an interpolation of the chorus of the 1976 uh, song, Parliament, how you pronounce the joint song, Mothership Connection, Star Child, which is the Star Child, song, which itself quotes the Negro spiritual Swing Low Sweet Chariot. Let Me Ride also samples James Brown's Funky Drummer and Bill Withers' 1973 single, Kissing My Love. The song make a reference to popular hard rock band Aerosmith in the lyric, and no, this ain't Aerosmith. So apparently there was a music video for this, but well, I had no clue that there was a music video for this. And of course, uh, there was a few mi remixes as well, but the official remix of the song featured four verses from Snoop Dogg and Daz and an appearance by George Clinton. It was recorded simultaneously with the original version and was released on the 12-inch vinyl when the solo version was chosen to be a part of the album. The full version of the remix is 11 minutes long and features a guitar solo by Johnny Guitar Rotson. The beat was later remade as a G-Funk remix and the instrumental was used for the Up and Smoke tour in 2000. Dr. Dre also produced the beat for the remix. So, yeah, there you go with that. Now, let's take a look. Oh, there's not, where there's one chart. So, it was 34th in the U.S. Billboard Hot 100, 4th in the U.S. Dance Club songs, again, interesting, 3rd in the U.S. Hot R&B slash Hip Hop songs charts, and 3rd on the U.S. Hot Rap songs, and number 1 in the U.S. Whitman charts, and it actually won a Grammy. It won a Grammy in 1994 for Best Rap Solo, which is pretty cool if I do say so myself. Now, even though this was not a single, we still, apparently, there's still some bit of info about the last track off this album, which is called Bitches Ain't Shit. So... 
Let's take a look at it. So there was an original version of this song, which is a West Coast hip hop song, rap song, really, include, including elements of gangster rap and G-Funk, much like the rest of Dr. Dre's album. In his verse, Dr. Dre exposes the hidden true nature of women in general, whom he believed to be nothing but worthy of only being used as objects for materialistic or sensual pleasures as very well explained by his lines. The song took place during the Ruthless Last Death Row Hip Hop Feud. The track was not listed on the first edition of the product. The album was re-released in 2001 with the track featured on the listing. Oh, I did not know that. So maybe I shouldn't uh, include this song in this, in this uh, review, but it is what it is. So yeah, there you go with that. All right, so now let's take a look at the songs from What's the First. And before we do, I gotta mention the two tracks that I consider skits, uh, High Power, well, not the two songs I consider skit. One of them I consider skit. The other one was like a legit skit. High Power Band, is, it feels like I said, this is the one where it feels like a skit, even though they treat it not like a skit. Because there's a lot of talking in this one rather than rapping and things like that. But the beat is really good. And then the Roach, the chronic outro, that is a really good beat right there. I wish they could have um, dropped some bars on that track, on that beat. All right, let's go from what's the first now. Rat to Tat Tat. There's a short skit at the beginning, but the beat is really cool. Tempo's a bit too slow for me, but it's a cool track nevertheless. And it's the worst track off the album, just by comparison. Again, it's still true, uh, a cool track. Ooh, I was about to butcher that. But comparing to the other tracks, that are actual songs, this is the worst track off this album. Next up is Lyrical Game Bay. Again, the beat is cool. I really like the melody here, but the tempo is a bit too slow for me, but it's a good track nevertheless. Next up, we got a nigga with a gun. Uh, another short skit to start the uh, track, but the beat is hard. Probably should have used a different snare. If they would have used a different snare, Dre would have used a different snare, it would have been much higher on my list. And this is a really good track right here. Next up is The Day The Niggas Took Over. Again, a little skit to start. The beat is a bit hard. I like the drums. Really good track. Next up, we got Bitches Ain't Shit. Again, the beat is really good. I like the drums and the melody in this one. Stranded on Death Row. It's the sixth best track off this album. The beat is really good. I like the tempo on the drums. Melody is cool, and this is a really good track right here. Little Ghetto Boy, there's like a skit that lasts for 18 seconds long here. The beat is semi-smooth. I really like the drums, especially that snare. This is a really good beat. And then These Nuts is the fourth best track off this album. 38 seconds to start it off with the skit. And then after that, this is a hard track right here. I like the melody and the drums. An excellent track. Now. I'm going to give you guys the top three tracks off this album. And they're all singles, by the way. They are all singles, which is funny. So, the third best track off this album is arguably Dr. Dre's most successful song of his career. And that's nothing but a G thing. Yes, you heard me right. Arguably his best single, his best song ever, his most uh, recognizable song ever is the third best track off this album. This is a classic without question. It's smooth and is excellent. And that's all I can say about it. But the other two singles were better, in my opinion. Second best track off this album is Fuck With Day, uh, Fuck With Dre Day, and Everybody Celebrate. It's another classic. Beat is hard. This is one of my favorite Dre songs, and it is a really good track. And this is probably his second um best single ever. And then the number one track off this album is Let Me Ride. The beat is really smooth. I like the drums and the melodies used. This is an excellent track. In my opinion, this is kind of a forgotten classic because. It's in the same album with Nothing But A G Thing and Fuck With Dre Day, and those two overshadow Let Me Ride, and Let Me Ride was the third single off this album. But great track, man. I really, really like this one, man. All right, so let's get on with the professional ratings for this album. So, All Music gave it five out of five stars. Blender gave it four out of five stars. The Encyclopedia of Popular Music gave it five out of five stars. Entertainment Weekly gave it an A+. LA Times gave it three out of four stars. Rolling Stones gave it four out of five stars. But the Rolling Stone album guy gave it five out of five stars. The Source gave it 4.5 out of five. USA Today gave it three and a half out of four stars. And the Village Voice gave it a C plus. All right, so I'm not going to read like paragraphs of this joint. So what do I think about this album? I'm going to be honest with you guys. This is a five out of freaking five right here. Without question, this is a five out of freaking five. And this joint came out and I was barely listening to rap music back then. So I did not get the opportunity to get a physical copy of this album. I recommend you get a physical copy of this album. This is an instant classic without question. Uh, this is not overrated or overhyped or anything like that. This is a straight up classic. I don't normally mess with West Coast music like that. I really got some of their uh, albums. Like I got a few Tupac albums. I got an Exhibit album. 
and that's pretty much it. Actually, no, uh, no, boys, uh, not boys, man, but uh, bones, duh. I don't think they're West Coast, but you get the point. I don't really mess with a lot of West Coast joints, but this joint is a classic without question. So, you should this is a five out of five, and you should have a physical copy of the chronic in your collection. So, I'm gonna call it a wrap for this review again if there's any other album that you want me to review make sure that it's 10 years old or older and you name it in the comment section below and i'll take a look at it i'll listen to it and more likely i will review it and it don't have to be rap hip hop or b it could be any genre so with that said y'all know who this is this is your new jay gatsby aka new steve Nate smith saying peace out y'all and i'll see y'all next time yeah Thank <laughs> you.